We're going to turn to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. Now notice that the passage it starts off in this manner with Revelation 2, 1. Unto not the church of Ephesus, but notice it says unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. Now this is going to be important. So notice in Revelation 2 and 3, we're going to be talking about seven churches here. We're going to put this as the church age. In the church age, now before that, as we all know, is the Old Testament. And then at the end of the church age, we know this will be the tribulation. We Christians would like to put seven time periods right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. Just put a shorter timeline there. Right here is the church of Ephesus. Right here is Smyrna. Pergamos. Thyatira. So it'll be written out here, so don't worry, you're not missing out on anything. Thyatira, Sardis, uh, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Within these timelines, you can guess where we're at. We're over here, Laodicea. Last final age of the church that we're in. Now, I already explained to you each of these definitions, so now we're going to cover each time bracket here. So notice that God is not speaking to the church of Ephesus. He's speaking to the angel of the church of Ephesus. Why is that? Now, this is going to be very important, and this relates to my basic doctrines or beginner's discipleship study concerning on the doctrine of angels, you might remember. When I gave you the definition of an angel, the common definition of an angel that you're going to hear is messenger. But in reality, that's not true. This is an inaccurate definition. So this is going to, you're going to hear Bible classes saying angel means messenger. But that is not true. The reason why is this, is because whenever you look up an angel in the Bible, they don't always give messages. For example... The Syrians, when they conquered Judah and they were going to kill them, the angel went down to kill all the Syrians. Now, he wasn't giving them a message. Hello, I bring great tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. No, he didn't do that. He just went down and killed thousands of them. So notice that this angel was not delivering a message. He killed them all. So what is an angel? An angel is more accurately... So Dr. Oakman defined it as an appearance. I would like to say representative. But this is the idea that they're sharing with each other. So messenger is kind of close to representative, but it's not really getting there. So here's the idea. Why is it appearance or representative? So, one example, let's look at the book of 2 Corinthians, please. 2 Corinthians. And we'll look at chapter 11. Chapter 11. Now, what you're going to notice, this is the angel of the what? Church of Ephesus. So, the angel was not giving a message to Ephesus. God was giving a message to the angel of the church of Ephesus. The angel of the church of Ephesus, meaning representing Ephesus. See that? It's appearing for Ephesus. It's representing Ephesus. This is one classic example. Notice that the angels are more likely known to be as appearances or representations, representatives of something else. Verse 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is, look at this, transformed into what? An angel of light. So this angel appears as light. That's what we see in this passage. That's why when you read Matthew chapter 18, there's a famous passage in Matthew 18 about be careful of how you treat the little ones. 
because their angels do behold them, right? So a lot of people use that passage as guardian angels. But here's the idea. That's not completely true. What is, it says their angels, the children's angels. The angels aren't giving messages to the children here. It's a representation and appearance of the children. That's what you're going to find out. Now, what's very interesting is this, is that if it is a representative or an appearance of something, then it's going to be pretty interesting concerning about spirits. So I'm going to get a little deep here, but this is going to be interesting for some of you. Now, we know that the Bible talks about spirits, right? There are spirits that are clean, good, and then there are spirits that are evil, and these are known as unclean spirits. Unclean spirits we know are devils, right? Okay. Now, I'm not going to get into this, but if you studied my basic doctrine teaching on demonology or demon possession, what did I say concerning about unclean spirits? about devils. What did I say about them? They are a result from your sin, correct? That's how demons possess you. That's how they enter you, is from your sin. I also gave an interesting point right here that it may have been born or come from Satan himself from the sins that you've committed. If that's true, okay, and I'm going to just put this as a theory, all right? This is not some kind of new doctrine that's established, canon of Scripture, and then you're going to get uh, all upset and mad and say, ah, this is crazy. So, but this is just a theory. If this is true that unclean spirits come from the sins, the Bible says angels are ministering spirits. They're the opposite. They're clean spirits. If they're known to be appearances and representative, it could be that from what uh, this could be also a representation and appearance from something you do. If this is the case with your wrongdoing, why not the case right here with what you do, with your own doings? So there might be some interest to this. That's why it's very interesting. Maybe that's why the Bible talks about angels as fire, the burning bush, right? The Bible says it was the angel. But he didn't come down as some kind of man. He appeared as a burning bush. Another thing is that, oh, let's see right here. The Bible mentions about angels are the morning stars. What's very interesting is that some people who research a lot more online, they think that the stars out there are angels. Now, me, I don't go as far as to say that, but there may be some truth in there that there is a connection. They might be an appearance of that. They might be an appearance of the star. It might be the same thing with the children or with your own spiritual state. That's why it makes sense God is speaking to the angel of the church of Ephesus, representing, the angel is representing that church. And God, when he's rebuking and he's speaking, he's speaking to that angel. Another th interesting thing is this, is that the Bible talks about uh, the, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe the Bible says the angel led the wise men to where Jesus was. And what was it? It was a star that led them. So angels, it would be more accurate to say that they are representatives or appearances. So even if it's not true about what I said about angels appearing from your actions, this is the very least undoubtedly true. It is undoubtedly true that it is a representative or an appearance. That much I know for a fact. It is not a messenger. Because any verse that you look up <clears throat> in scripture, these two... This definition is going to match in any time an angel shows up. It's going to be a representative for the Lord in something on his behalf. Or it's going to appear as something on God's behalf. That's what you're going to find out. 